All right, title of today's lecture is Balance in Equilibrium. Now, all of this is maintained or sensed in the uh, inner ear. Not to be confused, the external or middle or outer or middle ear. This is the inner or internal ear. But both equilibrium and hearing, I'm jumping around a little bit, and hearing are sensed as a result of movement of fluid or of fluid movements <coughs> and its effect on here's a type of cell ready hair cells in the inner ear so fluid movement and its effect on hair cells in the inner ear to be clear hair cells are not the same thing as hair follicles. They have nothing to do with like the hair that's on your skin or on top of your head. They're completely unrelated. The reason that they're, they're actually nerve cells. Um, the reason they're called hair cells is because under the microscope, they look like they have hair on them. But one of the hairs is really kind of long. Yeah, like disproportionately long and it really is like that but in cells we don't call hair hair on cells we call it what uh, cilia. cilia yeah these are all cilia now this gigantic one right here is called the kinocilium kinocilium is the big one okay all these little ends right here are called stereocilia. And there's a variation between how much taller this one is than these. Sometimes it's just a little bit taller. Sometimes it's way taller. Sometimes these are a lot taller next to it and things like that. This is a hair cell, which is a specialized nerve cell, and it is attached to other <coughs> neurons that are sending that information then to the brain for processing. Now we mentioned in our earlier units in unit one that the membrane proteins that basically trigger action potential can be uh, these ion channels can be started up one of three ways. What are three ways that ion channels can open? Mechanically, Mechanically regulated chemically regulated and voltage regulated which one automatic which one do you think this one is chemically mechanically or voltage those are all the choices those are all the choices good job everybody someone's committing who said who's who's committing to mechanic i thought heard somebody say that mechanically is how these are going to be operated okay because that fluid's going to move and it's going to bend the cilia okay so here's the important thing out to the side if the cilia bend the cilia bend toward the kinocilium the firing rate of the, the hair cell increases. So these are all firing. All of these things for equilibrium and balance are firing at a pretty steady rate. Okay. Uh, if the if the stereocilia and the kinocilium bends in this direction toward the kinocilium, then they're going to increase their firing rate. Okay, 
And then the, the converse of this statement is true. If the cilia bend away from the kind of cilium, then their firing rate decreases. Okay. <coughs> now, the reason this becomes a factor, and I'm not going to have you draw this in your notes, I just kind of want to show you where this is attached <coughs> to. We have a number of these hair cells embedded in this jelly type substance called the cupula. Okay? It's all very, very small. So here is the, the, you can see these little tiny cilia and then the kind of cilium there at the end. This whole area, now we're going to back out just a skosh so I can see, you can see this whole thing. Okay, watch this. The fluid that we're talking about that's going to move fills those semicircular canals I showed you the other day. The fluid's called endolymph and it it fills these things up. Basically, as we move our head, as we move our bodies, as we accelerate or decelerate, this fluid is going to move through these tubes. The cool thing about that is because the tubes are set up, how many of them are there? Three. Three. And how they're oriented on the X, the Y, and the Z axis. So our body has an idea of where we are in a, th in a three-dimensional space and how we're moving in that space. So as we move from side to side, as our body moves and accelerates, that fluid moves at a rate that is uh, equivalent to both the acceleration and the direction will move. And as it does, it pushes on this thing that's at the base of each of these called the cupula. And the cupula is attached to each of these cilia. So as it bends, as you see down here below, from one side or the other, the firing rate of that neuron is going to increase or decrease as a result of the way in which it's bent. So the firing rate from a particular location within here will tell our brain, we are accelerating this way. We are accelerating this way. These are the things that get all excited when we go on roller coaster rides. When you go upside down or you take off really, really fast. The things that, that thrill rides and stuff, they mess with this part of our head so that we get the you know thrill and enjoyment from those things. Okay. Um, let's talk just a little bit more about this here. Um, so let's put some of this in our notes, write it down in some... In, in word form. In the vestibule there are three in the vestibule. <coughs> there are three attached tubes. Called the what? They're not quite circles. Semicircular. Uh huh. Semicircular yeah. canals. <coughs> At the base of each canal are hair cells. Canals are filled with a fluid called endolymph. Filled with a fluid called endolymph. As our head moves, particularly accelerates, which in a sense is movement, 
Acceleration is movement because acceleration is stopping, starting, or changing direction. So anything that's really kind of moving um, as, as our head moves or accelerates, the fluid moves. in one or more of the canals bending the cilia information about about which hair cells <coughs> and how much movement is sent to the mesencephalon Mesencephalon has the job of then processing that information and in some people it does better than others okay because it's receiving information from both what we feel in our inner ear also it's sending information from our eyes and for the most time uh, most part it should give about the same report if you're on a roller coaster and your brain's like yeah we're going super fast and your eyes are like you know bugs are slapping into them everything is everything's jiving but let's say you're in a car driving down highway 34 and you're reading a book your eyes are telling you yeah we're sitting still your inner ear is telling you no we're not okay that's what motion sickness is and it affects some people more than others but you've got two conflicting pieces of information and for whatever reason the body's response is like well the eyes don't match what the inner ear is saying we'd better go ahead and throw up. But logically, it doesn't make a ton of sense, except to alert your body to the fact that something's wrong. You know, a lot of times we throw up in a situation where, it, like, I'm super nervous, I don't know what to do. Well, we'd better throw up, you know? So I'm not exactly sure why, but that's one of the responses to that, motion sickness. Basically, motion sickness medication, it, it acts to try to lessen the, the response of, the, of your brain to the stimulus. And I'm not exactly sure even how that works. Scopolamine and Dramamine and things like that, they try to work for that. So that's one of the two systems, okay? This is not a bullet point. This is one last little thing. In addition, we have ear stones. Yep. Their actual name is otoliths, which means ear stones. That help us to detect linear acceleration. Um they are located um, in the maculae. Um, okay, let me show you where that's at. It's still all in the vestibule, right above the cochlea. Basically, if the snail had these crazy hula hoops on his head, Okay, the hula hoops of the semicircular canals, right below that is this, is this area. Okay, so here is the maculae, are the maculae right there at the very back of that, right behind the semicircular canals. And inside of them are these little ear stones called otoliths. They sit on this, <laughs> they literally just call it gelatinous material, is this like gelatin-like structure and it sits on top of these hair cells and you can see here's the kinocilium and stereocilia. As we move, these are going to these little ear rocks are going to kind of fall backwards and bend the hair cell 
one direction or the other toward the kinocilium or away and will increase or decrease their firing rate as well. So this helps us to detect uh, you know, linear acceleration. Now, I had heard that, and I, I can't cite the research exactly, but they had done research to find out whether or not these otoliths here were different in migratory birds. From what I understand, they found that in birds that migrate, their otoliths are iron-based. Ours are calcium-based, because that's what our bones are made out of, but theirs are iron-based, which means that they can detect magnetic north, which I thought was pretty cool. Anyway, so that's how balance and equilibrium works. Basically, we have all this stuff that senses this, sends it to the brain, the brain processes it, and then we can tell if we're upright or upside down, or moving or stopped.